boom of mining in Latin America and Mexico, and we start in the 80s as part of the reorientation of the economies imposed in the context of the debt negotiation. It has increased between 70s and 2017. It increased by 60, 22 percent. Mining boom started in the 90s, just in the eve of the implementation of NAFTA. I mean, very related to it, as most of the uh, investment in, in mining, it's uh, Canadian, but also Mexican. What I want to address specifically, it's that there is a development narrative of government and corporations, which is very powerful, that present mining as an undeniable path of development and even for sustainable development. There's Mexican and Canadian, also Chinese and American capital, that mostly Mexican and Canadian. But the fact that Mexicans own 60% of the capital in mining activities has not produced any goods for, for the country of mining regions. And we found that mining contributes only with 0.9 of the country's GDP, and that the fiscal contributions of mining rights are really poor. Uh, Canadians are mostly owners of the concessions for gold and silver. So mining are still uh, not held uh, all over the country because most of the concessions are in exploration phase. So for, for the SDG, while no poverty, between 2012, um, out of the 15 municipalities, which are the top producers of gold and silver, the levels of poverty are higher than that of the national poverty level, which is already 65%. Uh, in relation to hunger, mining competes with family agriculture uh, over lands and water, and it has created crises in several previously pro uh, prosperous agricultural regions, such as the basin of the Sonora River and the Central Valley of Oaxaca, which counts now as, as regions of extreme poverty. In terms of health and, and, and well-being, the fleet of mining states have a high, the highest prevalence of kidney illness in the country. In terms of water, uh, mining in Mexico is based on underground water that supplies 40% of the water demand in the country and 20% of the aquifers that for mines operate are exhausted. But Mexico, in terms of Latin America, has been considered by CEPAL the country with the highest number of mining conflicts. In 2018, there were 460 cases of violence against environmental defenders in mining regions. In 2017, there were 19 community defenders were assassinated and other 15 were murdered in 2019. And 36, almost 40 percent of these aggressions are perpetrated by, the, by government actors. So my final words, it's that development cannot be achieved through extractivism that has exacerbated environmental and even economic destruction and social destruction. And there's an urgent need for new paradigms and narratives of development, environmental and public health. Thank you very much. <laughs>